In the next 10 minutes together, we are going to crack the code on reading job postings. It's a lost art, and it's one that we can absolutely transform in the era of AI. And I don't just mean for job seekers, although that's obviously a huge benefit. You also can infer company strategy, B2B sales approaches, and all kinds of other things just from reading job postings. A year ago, I wouldn't have been able to recommend this, but now with where LLMs are at, I can actually give you three different examples in the next few minutes that I was able to spin up that give you a comprehensive approach on how to read an entire company's strategy from just a set of job postings. And yes, I'll be dropping the prompts and everything else in the post. So you'll be able to follow up and do it yourself. So what are we talking about when we say a job search strategy informed by job postings? In the past, we would have said, hey, Nate, go and get a thousand job postings or the last 100 from the last 90 days and do this yourself. Conduct a manual review. I want you to categorize everything. I want you to identify commonalities, spot weak points, notice what they didn't post. Now look at how the products they offer compared to the job postings. You see how it goes on and on. Not anymore. You can get all of that done in just a prompt. In fact, you can get more done than you could before because you not only have the volume game, which you can play with LLMs, you also have the strategy game. So you can give the LLM a strategic prompt and you can tell it to reason and infer in a particular way over a set of job postings that it searches and it will do that. And it will come back and it will give you a view. Sometimes I think just showing it is way easier. So let me show you an actual response that I built about a real job posting situation at Anthropic, the major AI company. Check it out. All right. So I built this handy little app in Lovable just to showcase what you can do with it. Don't worry about these initial fields here. If you're uh, an engineer, it's really easy to put in an API key and use this yourself. I'll be sharing it. And if you're not, you can follow along and I'm gonna give you some prompts that you can use in other search engines. So if you don't know what an API is, you don't have to care. But look at what you get. So this is analysis results generated today, 924 when I'm recording this. And it gives you so many different components to look at. It infers a product strategy, doubling down on their core AI build, uh, and suggests that they have a lack of fresh platform engineering hires, which would indicate that they're focused more on scaling existing tech right now. That aligns with what we see from Anthropic's recent moves. It seems like a solid insight. Meanwhile, alignment science and model welfare roles indicate a willingness to tackle unsolved safety and ethics problems. Again, aligns tightly with what we see from Anthropic. We go down to inferred B2B sales approach. They're calling out that this signals a push for rapid enterprise adoption based on startup account management and B2B uh, marketing. And there's little evidence of dedicated sales engineering. So one of the things that's really interesting is you can start to infer a B2B strategy from this. You can start to look at this and say they don't have dedicated sales engineers yet. They don't have post-sales technical support. They're very early in their B2B startup account story here. There is an opportunity to come in and offer solutions for a sales team that is probably under stress right now. And you can read that from the job postings. You can infer that. Now, what if you're a job seeker? What does that look like? Well, they don't have an internships or entry-level roles posted right now, and they have very few roles for platform engineering. And so what's interesting about that is that they are essentially, essentially setting themselves up for a potential technical debt risk as they scale. And that is indeed what we see in some of the recent outages and the uh, work that Anthropic has done to their credit to talk about why the outages occur. They are struggling to keep pace with scaling demand, and they haven't yet invested in platform engineering. And so another, another insight here that you can see as you read through this, if you're putting another lens on this, is that Anthropic may need an additional capital injection in order to start to scale some of these platform pieces out. It has inferred cultural insights, which seem fair for what they're worth, but it's very easy to get them. It's trivial to tweak the prompt and get what you want. Inferred company weaknesses, it calls out platform engineering. It calls out a miss on PM, QA, and customer support. What's interesting here is that this underlines the sort of research bones of the company, where the company came from. This will not always show up. These are, these are individual insights that you get per company.
Now, this is the part that I love the most. You can actually see why the model did this, right? It will give you a table and it will say, this is what I read, this is the link to it, this is the reasoning, and this is the claims that I'm confirming here. And you can see that it's all recent stuff. This is not old postings it's working from. Is it perfect? No. Does it underline how much you can get out of just looking at job postings? Yes, it does. Yes, it does. Now, I want to give you a couple of other ways to look at this. This is not just something where you have to use a custom lovable app. You can do it directly in ChatGPT. You can do it in a search engine like Perplexity. I have prompts for that. The key to take away is that the quality of this assessment depends on your ability to ask very clearly for exactly what is important to you. And that's why I built different versions. I built a version for job seekers that kind of lines in on available roles and what you can get. I also built a version for folks who are looking for competitive intelligence. And that's not something we've talked about yet in this video, but as someone who has had to run competitive intelligence in the past, this, this would have been a lifesaver a year ago. Like it would have been huge because all you have to do is plug this thing in and you get a full competitive readout on your competitor just based on their job listings that they have publicly shared. You, you're not doing anything inappropriate. You're just looking at their job listings. And here it is. And that is one of the larger lessons that I want to call out here. We are in a world where there is an entire new class of data that was previously considered trivial data, data that wasn't worth hiding, wasn't worth securing because nobody had the time to analyze it. It's now open season. This data is now available for analysis. It's available for strategic understanding. If you're an investor and you're trying to invest in a company, why wouldn't you run a query like this on open job postings and cross-check that against what the company's principles are telling to you? Of course you would. That makes just perfect sense. So this is not just something that job seekers are interested in. This is something where if you need the T on a company, it is now easy to get. And I want you to ask yourself, what other classes of data are like that. What other classes of data out there have been trivial for a long time? And we're now thinking maybe that's not trivial anymore. I'm going to give you another example. And this is actually a safety tip in the age of AI. Think about when you last posted a publicly available selfie outside. And the reason I say that is because with the advent of reasoning models, especially the chat GPT image recognition models, they are extremely good at knowing where a photograph was taken in the world. And so if you have like your Instagram feed set to public and you're taking a bunch of selfies outside, even if you don't reveal your location, your location can be inferred from that information. There are other examples as well, but I think that gives you a picture. We, we are entering a world where LLMs are making a whole new class of data that would previously have been like waste data or data that nobody cared about. It's now useful. I picked job postings because I think it's one of the most useful examples of this. There are, as I've been saying, a dozen and a half ways to use this, right? You can be a job seeker. You can be a PM who's looking at competitive intelligence. You can be a sales guy looking at how to approach this company. You can be a buyer looking at whether you want to buy based on the job postings. You can be an investor, right? There's so many different roles you can take and still find this useful. Now, one thing I want to do is make sure that I share with you how this looks if you are not a fancy pants engineer and you do not have a perplexity API key. What does that look like? Well, I actually got a couple for you. So let me just share that quickly and I will show you what it looks like. Here we are. Same exact company, by the way. So this is Anthropic, right? It runs the query. You can actually see the query here. I'll be sharing it in the post. You can see how it works. Um, and it goes and runs it, right? It thinks for a bit and it goes and runs it. It gives you a sense of what it looked at. It gives you a sense of the signals it pulled out. So this is a little bit different order from what you saw in the lovable app that I showed. This is a, an order that emphasizes proving how it got there. And so these are the grounds or the inputs that it's using, and it wants to show you that first. So if you want to just scroll, you can scroll down to insights and you can see where they're investing. Uh, you can see career opportunities. Uh, and this one is absolutely aiming at the career side. So it it brings out more of the career piece than I have in the Lovable app, although Lovable makes it really trivial to remix these. So when I publish this, anybody is going to be able to just remix it and make it what you want. So you can make it a career one really easily. That's just about careers, not just about company intelligence. And I'll include this prompt. So the career folks are going to have plenty to work with. Uh, so it has a Seattle office that's growing rapidly and an NYC hub. 
It talks about the comp, which is, of course, insane AI comp. And then it gives you the receipts to show you kind of how it's thinking about, about it. And it's also talking about sort of competition, which, of course, like, that's not surprising, but it's nice that it pulled out, right? It's nice that it showed it. Um, and it calls out automation risk. It calls out less emphasis on consumer features. So you sort of know where they're at, which aligns with what the lovable prompt found. And so this is sort of like a lens on the same company from a different camera angle where you're looking just at careers and obsessed about it. And as you can see, it's not a fancy web page, but it's lots of information you can use and you don't have to have an API key or anything. You just run the prompt. And by the way, if you don't have perplexity or use it, ChatGPT has its own search engine. It will also run this prompt. Let me give you one more peek. I love this one. Um, this is a company radar that's more sort of like for the product manager or someone who wants to do like an overall analysis. And I think it's really cool. I think it, it sort of gives you a sense of what's in the box. Let me just share it with you here. All right, so it's gonna go through and it's gonna look at all the signals. It's gonna prove its way forward. And then it's gonna get into product strategy, right? It's gonna talk about how it's investing in Claude code, what MCP looks like as far as a moat goes, which is a really something I've been calling out is like, it's sort of an engineering moat for them to build that ecosystem. Um, this one talks a little bit about how they're doing sort of B2B sales. And this one does catch sort of a sales position piece around healthcare and financial services, which the lovable prompt didn't get. If you're looking at sort of reconciling that out, what I would suggest you do is you pull all three and then you start to hybridize them and harmonize them a little bit and pull out specific insights you're looking for. It's almost like getting 3D vision, right? You get different perspectives on the same job and they're, they're roughly aligned, but you get different nuances that come out. Uh, you have a call out on how engineers work, which I really love. Uh, you have a call out on anti-hierarchy signals, which is another great one. Um, and you have some interesting inferred weaknesses, right? Are there too many engineering manager positions with no teams built? Is there Euro chaos because they're aqua hiring teams? Uh, scaling fractures, this feels like it's really big and really fast. TPU dependency, which is frankly a really interesting piece of intelligence. Um, and so I think, I think this is a phenomenal overall perspective on the company. If I were in any kind of competitive intelligence, this would be really exciting for me. So one of the things I want you to take away as you look through this, is that this is not hard to do. Like, I'm gonna share the prompts, I'm gonna share how I worked through it, but what you should be thinking is, where is there data that I wanna get a hold of that would previously have just been really hard to do? How can I get a hold of that data and make use of it? LLMs make whole new classes of data accessible and they give all of us an easier time as a result. And so if you're in product, if you're a job seeker, if you're an investor, if you're a buyer, if you're in sales, I hope this helps you imagine differently what you can do, and obviously, make use of the prompts. Obviously, go use the Lovable app and have fun with it. Love to see what you built. Cheers.